everybody. We are back for another episode of Niche to Profit. And today we are going to talk about a very lucrative niche. It's actually one that I did many, many years ago. Um, kind of got bored with it. <laughs> I should probably look at it again. Um, and our guest today is the one and only the Sorcerer's Apprentice himself, Jeffrey Clark, uh, who has made a wonderful living with books and media and vinyl and, and all that good stuff. And if we have any youngsters, vinyl, these are things that we used to put on a record player and you put a little needle on it and it played music. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, hard to believe, you know, we've come so far that there are people who probably don't even know what that is. And of course, we are going to cover some hot sales of the week and we're going to do a, a story review and we're going to talk about a few items that just are not flying off the shelves. But let me first welcome on my guest, Jeffrey Clark. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, Danny. How you doing? I am doing well. And how are you this fine October day. It is a beautiful <laughs> October day here in Northern Indiana. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. You know, well, let's, let, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm just going to jump right in and I'm sure everybody else wants to know this too. How the heck did you get started first selling online? Well, I first got started when I was working in a factory building big half million dollar RVs. Hmm. And I happened to notice that they had several shelves that were devoted to uh, parts that were just not used. You know, when they would change the models, they would change, oh, you know, the wallpaper or, the, you know, the furniture or maybe the water heater or anything, you know. So there were all these RV parts on this shelf. And so I asked somebody, well, what, what's happening with those? They said, oh, we're waiting to take them to the auction house. So I started looking some of them up on eBay and found that, uh, you know, I could make a little side profit if I bought these from the company because they were just selling for pennies. All they wanted to do was clean off their shelf and then uh, selling them online. So my last year, I did that for about a year and a half, two years uh, before I quit the RV factory. And my last year, I actually made like 14 grand on the side just selling junk. Well, not junk, but, you know junk to them on eBay. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you basically started with something that was readily available to you at kind of the opportunity jump that you, how long ago was that? That was 2006 that I started doing that. All right, right. And now it is, so you do eBay and Amazon. I know that. Uh, is this like your full-time gig now? This is my full-time thing. Yeah. So where was the point where you got rid of the day job and did this full time? Well, I actually did get rid of the day job at that time. My wife and I had planned on uh, getting into some online uh, ventures. We were doing editing and ghostwriting, um, which we struggled with for several years. And one of the people that we were doing some editing for was Jim Cockrum, a friend of both mm -hmm. of ours, uh, who does, you know, fantastic teaching eBay and Amazon. And my wife nudged me about two years ago and said, you're doing all this writing for Jim. Why aren't you, you know, like, you know, studying his Amazon course? Why aren't you selling stuff on Amazon? You really like doing that. So about two years ago, I switched over and started doing some Amazon and found that it really, really spoke to like the inner parts of me. I mean, I love doing this. I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah, that whole making money thing and setting your own hours, working in your pajamas thing, that's that's a pretty uh, enticing thing. <laughs> pretty attractive, yep. <laughs> Right on. So, so we're talking about books and media and vinyl, which is, uh, you know, a big niche for you. What mm -hmm. made you kind of go that direction and, and get into those products? Well, books seem like the easiest thing to start with. And this is what I tell people in my Sources Apprentice group and also even coaching clients that I have. You know, if they're looking for a place to get started, I say, really, books is the easiest thing to do because, number one, they're ubiquitous. I mean, every garage sale you go to, every Practically every auction you go to, any estate sale you go to, there's tons of books around. Mm -hmm. So they're really super easy to find. Um, it's very easy. Almost every library has either a shelf set aside or they have scheduled sales, you know, where they sell their, their shelf pulls. Some of them even get uh, donations from the community, you know, to add to their sale to just to raise extra money for the library, friends of the library kind of thing. Those are super easy to find. And my gosh, I could almost do full time just doing books, really. Um, and the profit margin is insane. 
I mean, you know, you go to garage sales or auctions or library sales or whatever, you're paying a dollar or less a lot of times. And I cannot count, Danny, the number of books that I sell for over 50 bucks on a constant basis. Oh, it's I really hear you. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I just, I love, I mean, I still, it is so easy to scan books and I, I don't, well, I'm going to ask you what you use in a second, but I use the actual Amazon Flow app. That is my favorite book sourcing app. Boom, boom, boom. What do you use? I just use the Amazon Seller app. Um, I haven't tried Amazon Flow yet, but I understand the, the attraction there with the, you know, capturing the cover and everything. Uh, that's especially Amazon Flow is really good for uh, vinyl, selling vinyl, since you brought that mm -hmm. up. Vinyl was an easy thing for me to get into because back in the early 80s, okay, I know I just dated myself. That's okay. I actually ran a record store at the time. So vinyl's kind of always ah. been. So when I found that vinyl was selling FBA, Amazon, I, you know, I, I went nuts. Um, and the Flow app is great for vinyl because you can just capture the uh, the cover you know, of the, of the album and look it up because most of the vinyl you find are not going to have barcodes. Right. Well, that and let me just explain to people that don't know what the Flow app is. So on your phone, you download just a regular old Amazon app. Like if you are a shopper, you get this Amazon app. And I don't know if you guys can see this. I've got this on the Flow right now. But basically, you can search. You can either you can scan or you can use Flow. And when you use Flow, you just hold it up. It uses the camera to identify the the cover art or whatever, however it does that, the little, you can see the, it's got these little dots that are like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like spinning around looking, you know, for stuff. And then it just gives you the results down below. And literally you can scan a gazillion books in like an hour, right? Like that's not even a, okay, maybe it's a little exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, maybe. it's so fast because you just go boom, 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 boom. And the thing is, you don't get a lot of the metrics that you get on the Amazon seller app, but you can you can discard right away the ones that show up as your, you know, your three ninety nine or get it get it used for a penny right. kind of book. Those and let's talk about that for a minute. How do you deal with those penny those penny booksellers? Um, honestly, selling FBA, I, I don't pay any attention to the the merchant fulfilled penny sellers because I, when I'm selling FBA, FBA sellers are my only competition. The only ones that worry me are the 399 FBA sellers. If there's a whole bunch of them. Oh, um, FBA. Yeah. It is a fulfillment by Amazon in case anybody yep. you know, didn't know what that is. Um, but if, yeah, I get nervous if I see a bunch of $4, $5, $6 FBA sellers, because it's really hard you know, FBA has higher fees, of course, because Amazon's storing it and shipping it for you. And uh, it's pretty hard to make a decent profit if you have to price things under about nine bucks FBA. So, um, but yeah, the penny sellers, they, they really don't mean anything to me because they're not my competition. So do you have like a set price that you won't go under? I mean, is there a certain price cap that you, I mean, mine, I want $15 or more when I'm sending anything into Amazon. Do you have something like that? I generally try to stay over $10 and I say yeah. generally because, you know, all my rules are a little fuzzy because they, they all have, you know, well, if then type of situations that happen with them. I will send in books for $7.50, $8, particularly if they're small and lightweight, because then my shipping cost is less and the storage fees are less. You know, you get the, some of those big, heavy coffee table books. You send that in for 10 bucks. That's that's not hardly worth it. Because it's heavy to ship and, you know, it takes up a lot of space in your storage fees. Sure. But $10 is my general, that's my general limit. Awesome. And now are you putting these on eBay as well? Some of them. Uh, if I find something that's particularly rare, I will list it on eBay. Mm -hmm. And I don't sell a whole lot of books or vinyl really on eBay. But, you know, if you've got a good high dollar one, then I, I will cross list it. Yeah, it seems that when Amazon came along that eBay really lost the book market. And like you said, it is, you know, the collectors go there and that, but they really lost the general book market when, I mean, Amazon was the world's biggest bookstore. I mean, that, true. that was their niche when they started. Oh, what a few years makes, huh? Indeed. <laughs> crazy, crazy. So let's talk sure. about vinyl. And I already explained to the kids what vinyl is. <laughs> <laughs> it's making a 
comeback, though. Vinyls? It's a, oh, it's a huge thing. Yeah, it really is. Because you've got not only, uh, well, old people like me who actually, <laughs> up, you know, with vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> getting a you know the nostalgia kick out of it but you've also got young hipsters who think you know oh this old technology is really cool and honestly danny i've even been selling recently more reel-to-reel tapes as mm. well uh, as a nostalgia type thing um but vinyl is huge vinyl is huge on amazon um especially fba uh what i find in fba is if something is particularly difficult if it's like time consuming um, then a lot of sellers don't want to mess with it. You know, right. they want easy stuff that they can or just order a pallet and ship the whole pallet to to Amazon, you know, and let them do the work. And vinyl is extremely time consuming. It's not only time consuming to source, because as I said, there's no UPCs. You can't just scan a little barcode. You've either got to use flow, like you said, or, uh, you know, type in the, the title and the artist and everything. And even then, you're not 100 percent certain that the listing you're seeing matches with the vinyl you're holding in your hands because since there has been such a resurgence in vinyl in recent years a lot of popular titles have been reissued so mm. if you are trying to source vinyl and you're looking up on amazon actually click on the listing and go down to the uh, details and look for the release year if it says you know 2010 2012 that's going to be a reissue and that's very very unlikely that that's what you're holding in your hand at the garage sale you know at the garage sale it's most likely going to be the original 1972 mca release or whatever so you need to find the right listing to make sure you're listing it right once you do um, it's very likely that most of the sellers are going to be merchant fulfilled. Very, very few of them are going to be FBA. Um, as I said, vinyl is time consuming. It's time consuming to source. It's time consuming to prep because what you have to do really, and at least let me tell you my, uh, my procedure. I pull the vinyl out. I wipe it down with some uh, mild alcohol like isopropyl and a soft lint-free cloth, you know, just to make sure there's no smears or, or dirt or whatever on it. Then I inspect for scratches. If it does have some scratches, yes, I do have a record player, and I'll put it on and test to make sure that there's no skips. And that way I can put it in my condition notes as another selling point. This was, you know, play test of a couple scratches on side two, but this has been play tested with no skips. Um, then, uh, well, I'll just show you here, pull out a vinyl album here. Okay. Yeah. What, what is that one? This one. What do you got? I've got a Sesame street album. Oh, okay. cookie monster. I, oh my gosh. <laughs> I've done really well with original, uh, uh, vintage children's albums. Some of these sell for big, big money. Um, a lot of them will have the original paper sleeve inside. Sometimes that can be a selling point, too. If you say, you know, if it's got uh, like the lyrics printed on it or concert photos, sometimes mm. a lot of the rock bands did that. You can put that in the condition notes, too. If it doesn't, then I buy paper sleeves in bulk and I make sure to include one. Really? In the album. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a super tip. I didn't even think yeah, about that. Uh, you can get them right on Amazon. Um, now, to send this in, I don't want this going into the Amazon warehouse, you know, where this thing can just fall out. So I get 13-inch square 2 mil poly bags, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I do is after I've graded this and after I've listed it and cleaned it up and listened to it and everything, I will bag it like a so, Okay. And then just heat seal it across the top. Then when I do my FBA, I've got my FBA sticker. That goes on here along with a suffocation warning sticker. Amazon, anytime you send a plastic bag that has an opening bigger than five inches, Amazon wants a suffocation warning on there. But that protects it in the warehouse, protects it from dirt or, you know, anything else getting on it. So you don't so, box it or anything. You send it in just in that bag and trust them not to, like, munch it in half. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of sellers do buy like the cardboard LP mailers, and that's great too. You know, um, for me, I just started using the bags and it seems to work great. So, you know, every now and then I do get a notice that Amazon says, hey, we destroyed your, your record in the warehouse. But, you know, if they damage it in the warehouse, they pay, they for, it. pay for it. Yeah, they pay yeah. for it. 
Awesome. So like I said, it's it's a time consuming process and a lot of people don't want to do it, which is why you find very, very little FBA competition for vinyl albums. Like I, I was telling you this before the show, I have like a stack of vinyl. I'm really good at buying it. I've not been so good at getting it sent in. Um, yeah. And and I actually went and I got the the boxes to put everything, and that's probably why I haven't like finished you know prepping it. But, but I got to tell you this: Do you watch Suits, the the show Suits? Yes, I love Suits. Okay, do you show. just wish you could get a hold of Harvey Specter's mm. bookcase full of collectible vinyl? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I love it. I got to tell you this story, Danny. This is really funny. Um, I started selling some, finding some vinyl, you know, just a hundred here, 50 there, 25 there, whatever. And so in January of this year, I was trolling through Craigslist and I found this ad that said, Hey, I've got over a thousand vinyl albums and I want 300 bucks for them. So I thought, "Ah, that's that's a pretty good price. I'll go check out this guy's collection. So I connected with him and uh, went to his place. He's an 80 year old guy. And we went out to the back of his property, and he had this trailer that had fallen off the foundation. Oh, so it's no. like sitting at this kind of angle, right? So we go into his trailer, and we're walking, you know, on the floor <laughs> <laughs> angle. And he opens up a door to a bathroom in the trailer, and I'm not kidding you, the whole room was filled, like, chest high with <sighs> albums. So I hurried up and gave him 300 bucks before he could change his mind. I filled up the back end of my pickup, took it home, got my daughter. We filled up the back end of our minivan completely full. And as we were unloading, we just kind of did a rough guesstimate of how many we have. I think I think there's close to 6,000 albums in that collection. Wow. That I'm getting for 300 bucks. And I just started, I mean, I've listed, gone through probably a fourth of them so far. And that was, you know seven eight months ago <laughs> so i think we but, have pulled up one of those albums that you sold from that that, that don't bother me i can't cope oh from the, my gosh yeah 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 that's an insane sale <laughs> yeah you sold that one for 175 bucks 175 bucks yep or one and you paid 300 for all of these i paid 300 for all <laughs> 6,000 albums. That's a beautiful thing right there. <laughs> I'm liking the ROI. Wow. Wow. So um, I know you shared with me some some other cool stories you have. Tell me the story behind the Pooh song book. Oh, that was so neat. I was in a, a kind of a trendy bookstore close to Notre Dame. I live pretty close to University of Notre Dame. And so I was looking through there and I was scanning a few things and looking them up and everything was pretty high priced. I thought, yeah, I'm really not going to find anything in here. And I was kind of nosing through the children's books and this one just caught my eye. It's called the Pooh Songbook. And um, what caught my eye about it is that it was uh, pre-Disney. So it still had the old, I forget the illustrator's name, but it had the old um, illustrations in it. And uh, it didn't have that great of a rank on Amazon, but there were no FBA sellers. And any time I find something with no FBA sellers, it catches my eye. So I bought it for $4 and I priced it at uh, 92 bucks. Um, and when I checked the listing a couple weeks later, somebody had listed another one at $25. Hmm. So I had this momentary thought of, well, I should lower my price. But man, if you get that urge, most of the time, just fight it. You know, I just left the price forgot about it. And it sold about a year later for $92. Wow. Yeah. You guys, that's how Amazon works is somebody comes in lower than you. You just got to wait yep. it out. They'll sell there. Yep. It's supply and demand, you know? Exactly. Yep. Yep. So it works. Yeah. And what other business, you know, where else can you, you can't go to a bank and deposit $4 and draw out $92 a year later, at least not without a gun in your hand. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is true. So uh, let's see. We got one more here. Tailoring suits the professional way. This looks like an oldie. It was pretty cool. That's a 1953 book. Um, and it was it's written by apparently some Jedi master tailor dude. I, I don't know. You know. I don't know anything about tailoring. I, I just, just out of kicks, I did a little research on tailoring. And I found that there's like a thousand registered tailors like worldwide, you know, so, I mean, the, 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 the target market here is really, really small, right? Mm-hmm. But I found this book at an estate sale about a half mile from my house. 
was going through there and they had a bunch of sewing kits and uh, different stuff and just a small box with a few books in it. And this was one of the books. So I bought it for a dollar and I listed it for $287.50 and it sold within, I think, like two months to a guy in Hong Kong. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And he, he, this is the cool thing. And I have your, your listing here pulled up. I, I believe this is, is this is probably the picture um, that you Usually used... the picture on the list. My I took a picture of my book because the picture on the listing is pretty crappy. And my okay. book was in much better condition. So that's uh... a good tip for you too. Uh, that's a good tip for you too. If your item is in better condition than the picture on the listing, take a picture and put it in your listing. Right. Yeah. And how do they do that? Um, it's on like the second page when you're actually creating listing, it'll have a spot that says add photo. And I, I just took it with my phone. You know, I don't have any professional, well, my daughter has professional equipment cause she's a photographer, but I just use my phone, right. And uploaded it to, uh, to my Amazon listing and it, it worked fine. Well, I cropped it down, you know, so it didn't have like crap around it or anything, but <laughs> that you make a really good point. And I think um, there's a lot of people who may not know this when listing something on Amazon is that you can upload your own pictures of the item. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I wanted you to kind of make that point a little stronger because then when somebody, when you have the buy box, it's going to show your pictures. Right. Yeah. Right. It won't necessarily change the main picture of the listing, but it, even if you don't have the buy box, it'll show your picture right next to your listing. So somebody can see, oh, this one looks better than this, you know, junk in the main picture. Yep. Yep. Awesome stuff. Man, we could just go on all day, couldn't we? Because these scores oh, yeah. just keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeffrey, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Where can people find you? Uh, they can actually find me on Facebook at The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Just request to join the group and I will let you in. I'm also on Twitter at The Sorcerer's App. I tried putting in The Sorcerer's Apprentice. It was a little too long for Twitter. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on Twitter and Periscope as at The Sorcerer's App. Awesome. And you do some really fun, cool, you share your scores that you find out there, videos and stuff. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye and uh, come to Vegas and come be in the studio here and, and be my guest one day. That'd be great. I'd love it. Right on. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thanks, Danny. And we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, why won't they buy? Millions of online sellers are looking for one identity to use in thousands of platforms. E-Rated manages your reputation by importing unlimited social media, marketplace, and behavioral data. It reveals your cross-platform performance, compares it with competitors, and calculates your e-worth. And it gives you the tools you need to improve sales and find room to grow. Discover your e-worth and your own reputation. Shareyourreputation.com. And now you can attach your little reputation widget to Shopify and WordPress sites. And I worked out a little deal for you. So use, let me make sure I got the code right. Danny Deal, D-A-N-N-I-D-E-A-L, Danny Deal. You get 20% off, 20% off for my viewers. Okay. And we have our Why Won't They Buy segment. All right, guys, thank you for sending these in over at the Danny App Facebook group. And uh, we post this, we call it Why Won't They Buy Wednesday over there, where you can post these items and then we'll go over them on the show and try to figure out how to get these things flying off your virtual shelves. Uh, so our first one comes from Beth Kelly. Beth, I, are you in the chat? I haven't seen your name come by yet. She has this L Louis Dell Olio women's 16 coat jacket, khaki brown, 100%. And, and just we just did in the Appster Academy, we call it the Danny App Academy, we just did an almost two-hour webinar all on titles and going over how to make these titles optimized and everything. Um, so check that out. But this is one where um, first I have to know, is this a good brand? I mean, that's always the first thing I got to ask. And I'm not, I am not a designer clothing shopper. I buy most of my clothes at Savers. <laughs> Don't tell. All right. Oh, I just told everybody. All right. Hey, you can get really good stuff at Savers, okay? So, Louis Dow Olio. 
So that's good that I'm seeing that it's already coming up as a suggested search term. So let's just bip on over and I'm going to sort by highest. Remember, I always sort by highest because I really don't care what the low ones are going for. I want to see what somebody's willing to pay. And I'm going to go pre-owned so we can apples to apples here. And I'm seeing this is a pretty high priced brand. And I'm going to go over here to sold listings. All right. So we're about 87, 65, 69. You notice I don't care that it's not the same jacket. I want to be clear that when I'm doing my research and it's about the brand, I'm looking at what the brand goes for. So people have this listed higher, but it's not selling higher. So I think your price is good. So we're good there. So this is a brand that you want up front in the title. Somebody could very well be searching. But there is a word in this title that gives a lot of value to this item. And that is this little word, cashmere, over here. Cashmere is pricey. Um, that could actually bump your, your price up quite a bit. So I would be apt to change that title to Louis Del Olio Cashmere Jacket or Coat. Pick one or the other. Pick. I'd go with Coat. Less letters. Um, Louis Del Olio Cashmere Coat. And you can put size 16. Take out the rest of that. Take out the rest of that stuff. Um, I, I would I would take out women's because if somebody is searching for a Louis de Olio coat, they're going to go, and let me go back to this, they're going to go over to this little area right here, and they're going to go, I only want to see the women's, or I only want to see the men's. So they're going to filter it over here um, with eBay's tools to do so. So you don't need to do that. And the other reason you can just pick coat or jacket is because eBay really knows those are interchangeable terms as well, okay? That's one of those ones that uh, you, it's just like saying mug and cup. You don't have to use both. eBay knows, and they'll bring back results either or. So shorten up that title, and I'd be apt to actually, I, I know I'm going to go against what I just said in the beginning. I, I'd actually raise that price up a bit. If this is not selling, let's see, you've had this listed for almost a year. Okay, you've had this listed for almost a year. And this, sell similar, put the price at $199.95 or $199.96, whatever you want to do there. Um, reason being, you're going to reach a completely different customer now. And you're going to reach a customer who may not trust an $89 price tag on something that probably sold retail for about $500. So it's perceived value. That price will will tell somebody, ooh, this is a better coat than that one over there that, you know, was $89. So I was up the price, up the price, get a different market going. All right. Then next we have. Oh, oh, no fair. You fixed it before. <laughs> <laughs> so this comes from Suzanne Phillips and I was going to tell her, oh, 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 I know this one. It's spelled wrong. Um, it was originally a Wilson bear cake pan and she fixed it to Wilton because that is the beauty of the Danny out Facebook group is you have a whole bunch of people to help you with these items. So that was probably the main reason this item wasn't selling, but I'm a little worried that there's no pictures. What happened to your pictures? So that is definitely, and I know it had pictures yesterday when you submitted this. So not sure what's going on there with the pictures, but you definitely want to get that fixed right away. Um, so this is a Wilton Bear cake pan. I remember what it looked like. So let's see if we can find one. Da, da, da. We don't want dead air. Danny talk. Okay. Okay. I can always sing. Just remind me, I can always sing. Oh, and we don't want to look in women's clothing for this. I was probably not going to find one in there. All right, let's go down. Yeah, look at these things that people sell these things by the drive. If, if you specialized in Wilton cake pans, let me just do a little aside here. You can find lots of these. Like, look at $15 for 10 of these and, you know, 13 of these for $21. So if you wanted to, like, niche in Wilton cake pans... Man, eBay is your place to source because I'm telling you, sellers just bunch these up and sell them all together. Okay, let's go down here and see if we can find... There he is. So look at that. This is the Wilton Stand Up Cuddly Bear. 
birthday cake. I think this is the same one. Is is Suzanne in the chat? I'm not sure. Somebody might want to tell her. Look at that. Somebody's willing to pay like 33 bucks for this cake pan. Oh, there she is. All right. Is this the same one? Am I looking at the same one right here? I think that's what he was. So let's see if there's any more. Yep. I think that's the same one. So you know what that tells me? Your price? Yeah. You know what? I'd raise your price up just a wee bit. When you're pricing, remember... And retail stores do this all the time. You don't want to price it where you want to sell it. If you've got make offer on there, you've got to cushion it up that 10 or 20 or 30% that you're intending to come down at some point. Uh, so, it, you know, even the thrift stores do this now. They know they're giving out those 20 and 30% discount coupons and days. Does it stop people from shopping when they don't have a discount? It does not. People will still come in and pay full price for stuff. But what it does is it gives you a lot of room to work with people on those best offers. So if you got this priced at $34.99 and somebody comes in with a best offer of $27.99, you're going to take it. You're probably going to take a little less than that because you've already built in, hopefully, a little cushion. Uh, But always remember that in your pricing price on the high side. That is also why I go over and see what what was the highest somebody was willing to pay for this and we found this one for 32.79. So, yeah, I'd definitely bump up that price a little bit. But I think this is going to sell now that you've got the name spelled right and once you get some pictures added back in there, you'll be good to go. Good to go. Wilton cake pans still I I don't know. What, I mean, people still bake cakes. And they bake cakes for kids, you know, mostly. So these things sell. All right. And last but certainly not least, if it'll come up, um, this is from Paula Turner. Paula has this vintage Lazy Susan turntable, speckled turquoise California pottery blue. Um, California pottery is highly desired, and I'm worried that that phrase is so deep into your title um, I would be more apt to get that bumped up to the beginning and maybe even call it let's go do a little searchy poo yeah let's see California pottery lazy Susan and <laughs> It's still trying to search in women's clothes. Okay, stop trying to search in women's clothes, okay? Here we go. Much better. All right, so we've got mid-century. We've got vintage Belmar. That one's pretty similar. 1950s. Um, so that kind of confirms my suspicions that this is a mid-century piece. Don't be fooled by these small prices here because they had about $50 shipping padded in there. And somebody bought it anyway. But you know, they're not going to pay very much on on the price end if you've got that high of shipping. Just keep that in mind. Better to, better to do the free shipping and cushion it in there. All right, let's go back and look at yours. So I would, I would change, I'd take out vintage and I'd actually put mid-century California pottery, lazy Susan turntable, take out the rest. Put your blue in your, and it looks like it, is it pink too? No, it's gray. So put the color in your item specifics and the speckled in your item specifics and take those words out of your title and just really key it into the person who's looking for it. Yeah, I thought it was pink too. It's not, it's not pink. It's not pink. If it was pink, it'd probably be like long gone. It'd like flown off the shelf. Um, Aha. And I see you're breaking out the shipping on this, and I'm telling you, people don't like to do that math. There was another study came out. I'm going to talk about this next week. We're going to talk about this free shipping thing next week um, because there was another study just came out about free shipping, and people are tuning out things in e-commerce that do not have free shipping because they are getting so spoiled with not doing the math. Um, so just cushion enough in there. If it's going to cost $11 to ship that to me, 50, 60, heck, I would price this at like $79.99 or $89.99. You've got plenty of cushion in there for that free shipping. 
and and then people don't see it. They don't have to know how much you're paying for shipping. And if somebody in the state over from you buys it and the shipping is half of what it would be for me, say, guess what? That's extra money in your pocket. Profits. Profits. Plus, some of you may not be realizing this, that if you are a top rated seller and you are charging shipping, you, number one, you're paying the final value fee on that shipping. And number two, you're not getting any discount on it because with top rated seller, you get that 20% discount on your final value fee. So if it's free shipping, if it's built into your price, you're getting the full discount you got coming. If it's broken out, you are not. So that is something to keep track of. (laughs) <laughs> she says, if it goes East Coast, it's $20. Okay, so pad $20 into there for that shipping. And I know, I know, she, she's going to want to be one of my holdouts on this. Um, but you guys are going to have to pay attention to this free shipping thing. Yes, you're going to be able to sell things with the shipping broke out. Um, but I would, I would test it, do three months with free shipping, and then go back and do three months without it, and look at your numbers really close, and look at your traffic. Um, because it's all about the traffic that brings about the conversion numbers for your business. So I know you can disagree with me. It's okay. I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep doing big, heavy, obnoxious stuff to the East Coast too, because I'm over on the West Coast. I got to ship it to the East Coast. Lamps and all kinds of stuff. Free shipping. Free shipping. Sell that stuff all day long and make huge margins. See, that's the thing. It's just you buy it right you can afford to do the free shipping and, you know, weigh the difference between a little less of the profit margin if it does have to go someplace that's expensive versus getting more sales and more sales and more sales and more sales. All right. So thank you for those. Um, Let me know when those fly off the shelves. And how about we get ready to do a little Danny's Two Cents Store Review. How do you guys like the new music? I thought we needed to break up these segments a little bit. You know, I felt like a, here's Danny. All right. A little self-serving, I know. (laughs) All right, Carolyn. Carolyn, are you in the chat? There she is. Carolyn is here. And her store is CJ's Linen Clothing Estate Finds. So, I always want to commend you guys for getting some really key words into your titles. Uh, I love that this says CJ's Linen Clothing. And I did a little research on Linen Clothing after seeing um, you mention, uh, and I love, I love that you put this in here, that, uh, welcome, Linen Clothing is mentioned in the Bible and may have calming and healing qualities. I did not know this. This is... This is the beginning of a really good uh, messaging for your niche. Uh, there, I'm sure there are people who do know that and they seek that out. Um, so look over my other natural fiber clothing items. Browse the estate treasures that include discontinued and retired china patterns. And this is where you lost me. So this is where we're going we're to have a little conversation here because I think you have the the elements of a tremendously profitable niche here, keying in on the linen and natural fiber clothing. I know that is a hot, hot subject Uh, right now. You know, there are a lot of people doing organic and that earthy, and you can find those people so easy, so easy. I bet there are groups with thousands of them in it over on Facebook that you could be um, talking to. So the first thing I would really love to encourage you to do is to cut loose the estate finds piece of that, that store and narrow in on the linen and natural fiber clothing and accessories. I mean, you can do, this is where you can expand a niche because the people you are targeting understand the, uh, the benefits of these natural fibers. And, and of course, you know, they have kids that need washcloths and towels and sheets and, and there's like 
There's a whole variety of things that the same people that come here for the clothing will be attracted to. So I really think you should just key in on the the linen clothing and and natural fiber stuff. And let me ask you, do you find a lot of that stuff? And I get to ask her this because she's in the chat. Are you able to source a lot of the linens and the the natural fiber items? I'm I'm guessing you're probably thrifting and and going to those types of places. Uh, do you have any trouble getting that stuff readily available to you to list? And we'll see what she says here. Yeah, and you've got others in the chat going, oh, yes, 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 love linen and love, yeah. And I know it's it's higher priced. That's been a problem. Um, she lives in the boonies and hard to get good linen now. I, I would I would suspect, though, that you could source like right on eBay because you've got a lot of yard sale type sellers who are listing this stuff for pennies on the dollar of really what it should be going for. Just like I showed the Wilton cake pans, uh, you could probably do the very, very same thing with the linens and the bamboo towels and the and and look into wholesale if you are in an area and this goes for anybody if you're in an area where you can't just get out and get to the stores and you've got to get more creative in how you source items for your business so there is a lot of opportunity to do what we call online arbitrage you can find a lot of online sources for all types of different products and then they're delivered right to your door and you can shop right there on eBay. I cannot tell you how many things that I buy on eBay and turn around and sell on eBay. And here's the thing. I know there's there's some that say, but what if they find out? What if you hurt their feelings? You know what? It, you know what? They listed it. They got their price. They're probably very happy they sold that item. Uh, and if not, they need to watch the Niche to Profit show. <laughs> and then I won't be buying from them anymore. <laughs> but seriously, the information is out there. You know, the it, we cannot be responsible for what somebody else prices their items at. There is no guilt for buying something that somebody has priced. And no more than going to a store where they have it on clearance and you buy it there. Do you feel guilty for that? Not me. Uh, they want it sold. So here's the thing. Um, start looking. Do a little research and see. And one of the ways I do that, and let's just go. Let's go do a little search. And I don't know anything about linen, special brands or anything. So I'm just going to put in linen. Ah, oh, heck. Let's put in linen jacket. Why not? Now, instead of searching by highest price, I am going to search by lowest price. And I'm not going to look at solds because that doesn't do us any good, right? Let's get out of the solds. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So you can see there's people putting things up for 99 cents. For 99, with free shipping. Holy smokes. I'm telling you guys, you can source on eBay. Um, so you've got here another linen jacket, 69 cents shipping. What's the point? Oh, it's a pattern. Okay. We'll take that. Um, but you can see, you've got to get past the patterns, but all kinds of things that you can turn around and buy and then sell for a higher price because you're keying in on the linen. And here's the very cool thing. Like here's one, a buck 25, 374 shipping. Here's the cool thing about being niched. Once you are niched and you are going after a customer who isn't just here price shopping like I'm doing right now. You are conveying the value of wearing linen. You are giving them more than just a piece of clothing. You are giving them a health benefit. You're giving them this whole reason that they want to fill their closet with linen clothing because of what it, you sell the benefits. You sell the benefits of wearing that linen, and then it's just a matter of them coming in and finding the right thing. But you get to charge more. You get to charge more when you're a specialist. And that's the uh, very groovy thing about having a niche. So uh, you can do a little arbitrage this way. 
You can do a little arbitrage with some of the online stores. You can find new product. Um, I don't know a specialty store that that does the natural fibers, but I'm sure they're out there and they run clearance. Um, look there and start looking into wholesale. Start running some lines of goods that uh, you could just carry and, and keep replenishing because I really think this is a niche that you can build so much around. You can you can blog about this. You can have wonderful Facebook relationships and groups where this is their thing is is all of this uh, stuff so so uh, yeah and I'm, I'm like you know and there is a disconnect when you're when you're bringing in something like the estate finds which is an eclectic mix of stuff and it's a, it's just a nice way of saying we're it's kind of an online yard sale um <laughs> That's that. You know what? That is my thing. I'm gonna take you guys from being an online yard sale to being an e-commerce business. And um, I, I, I'd be nice. I won't. I'm not gonna be mean to you. But, but if you want these sales to boom, this is what you got to do. You got to You've got to bite the bullet and stop chasing after the the tomorrow profit and look at the long term profit. I meant to say the today profit and go for the tomorrow. Yeah, it all sounded good in my head. Um, the point being is short-term gain can cost you long-term profits because you can't build a following. You can't build those return customers. You can't really establish that marketing that gets you brought up in a Google search for linen clothing. How cool would that be? If somebody's over on Google looking for a place that they can buy some linen clothing and you come up organically, ha, huh, pun intended, in the results, meaning you didn't have to pay for any advertising. You just were there because that's what the search engine goes. Ah, this is the great place to send people. So that's what the niche can do for you. And I think you are on a tremendously good track of following this path. So go and, and I would bet you, I would bet you, you can find some of these thrifters over on the Danny app group, hint, hint, who would be happy to watch their stores for the linen items, educate them a little bit on what you'll buy from them and at what price range. You can have people doing your sourcing for you because people love to shop. Um, so I'll be watching for you. I'll be watching for this stuff for you. No problem. So I hope that's helpful. That is my two cents. And I uh, hope that brings you some more business. Thank you for being willing to submit your store. All right. How about some hot sales of the week? Could they hear that, Scott? Okay, he's singing and dancing over there. He's got the disco ball going. <laughs> hey, someday I'm going to have my own disco ball. You know that, right? It's on my wish list. I never told you that, did I? It's true. I want a disco ball. A real one, not one of those replicas. I want the real thing. I want a room in my house with the shiny floor. And yes, I do. Okay confessions of a mad e-bear right the thing is i know i can find one <laughs> all right let's talk about these hot sales enough talk about disco balls this comes from vicky vicky this uh is she bought six cases of these in a closeout for 13 dollars a piece i love that kind of sourcing i just love that kind of sourcing once all the deal scouts were sold out, I'm finally able to get full retail. And I don't know, is Vicky with us today? Um, because I wanted to ask Vicky what the what she calls the deal scouts were selling them for. Um, this is a perfect example also of what Jeffrey was talking about, how when you have people that come in at a lower price than you on the same item, and it can be very frustrating, and you got to wait them out a little bit. But make no mistake, they usually sell out, and then guess what? I I'm assuming that she means that deal scout means that other people also got them at a liquidation price, but instead of using the Danny app method of pricing them high right off the bat, they just wanted to... Turn them, turn them, turn them for a much lower profit. 
So you can see these are now selling at $137.99. $137.99. Yep. And two have sold. And this is the beauty of a multi-quantity listing, guys, is once you sell that first one, it's a snowball effect because this is really how eBay search is designed to boost up people's listings is they go, oh, one sold. This is a good item at a good price. Let's put it out there for as many possible buyers that we think are looking for this thing as possible. That's how you get up high in, in best match search. So two sold. I bet this is, you can see 13 watching. Um, the And you can't, yes, you can. You can't do it on a multivariation. I know you're probably wondering, can't what? Can't what? You uh, Best offer. Get best offer on this. Because what's going to happen is if you have best offer on this and now people are coming in and making a best offer, it's going to bump you up even more. And for something that you only paid $13 for, you have got a lot of wiggle room because we don't want you holding on to this stuff for years. I don't want you holding it on to it for over a year even, really. I mean, this is about this this is a cash flow business, my friends. If you want to go do more shopping, you got to sell the stuff that you've already bought. It is the time value of money at play here. So, you got to turn this stuff and one of the best ways to do that is give people the option to make an offer and get it sold. So, Let's see if we can see. They both sold at one thirty seven ninety nine. Look at that. So I don't. It won't show. Um, I, I, I'm guessing. I would have to tell. I'm assuming <laughs> that they're not going to show you the price of any best offers on this page. It's going to get crossed out. You're going to know that a best offer was made, just like on the feedback and and all of that on the ended item page. It's not going to show you what the best offer was. It's just going to show you that it was made. Yep. And these are cute. Cute, cute always sells. The cute factor, the eye appeal, the awe factor. That That's worth money. That's worth money. So good job. Good job. And speaking of the awe factor, we have, oh, where's the original listing here? This comes from Lori Brill. Lori, I don't think you have submitted one of these before. So she has this kitty cucumber ballerina figurine. Everybody say it. Come on. Aww. She says she got a lot of 41 of these kitty cucumber collectibles at an online auction. Paid 44 cents each. Started listing them Friday and sold this one yesterday as well as one locally. They are adorable and fun to list. And the ROI is awesome. And absolutely. And I wanted to. Yes. I did want to share this one, even though you guys go, but it's only $29.99. Somebody do the math for me, like real quick, $29.99 times 41. Come on, quick. Come on. <laughs> you get the point. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of ROI. And even if these are different, it is still sell similar, tweak a couple things, sell similar, tweak a couple things, putting these things up, boom, boom, boom. And yeah, that is a nice ROI. I take that. Okay. I'm very familiar with this next one. Um, this is, again, another multi-quantity listing. This comes from my mama. Uh, she and my brother made this CD a few years ago called Sing You Seniors because my mom goes out to assisted living homes and does what she calls sing-alongs. She plays the piano or plays her accordion and gives them the lyrics and, you know, tambourines and things to play along. Uh, so they created a CD with the music on it. It's her playing the piano. And um, hi, mom, how many of these have you sold today? I know you've sold more than than eight uh, because you had like a whole case of them and you're down to not very many. And I keep telling her, OK, we need to have like a Christmas CD and we need to have like a, uh, uh, you know, a episode, episode, not episode. What do you call it? Number two, whatever the number two would be. <laughs> And number two, volume, volume. That's the word I was looking for. Volume two. She's, yeah, she sold 40 to 60 of them, you know. And they just keep on selling. Now she's selling them for $21.95. And the cost to make these was about four bucks, which was, I, I mean, 
it's cheaper now. You can you can make them a lot cheaper now. You could do yeah, you could do them for like a buck a piece. Um, but this was you know back a, a little while ago, and so yeah, they're selling. They're selling. All right, way to go, mom. Keep selling them. I want steak tonight. Oh, never mind. And this one is super cool. I love this. I just love this. Airline stuff is a hot collectible. Hot, hot collectible. This is an Eastern Airlines stewardess, the unpolitically correct term for a flight attendant, uh, uniform. And this sold, let's see what the story behind this is real quick. Paid 20 bucks at a yard sale. Sold for $149.99. Get this. Within one day of listing. Within one day of listing. Found four more vintage Delta Airlines uniforms this weekend. Listed two today. Priced them higher. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. I would definitely price higher if something sells within a day. But the other thing you guys have to remember is don't worry if something sells quick. Don't sit there and second guess yourself that, oh my gosh, maybe I could have, got, could have gotten more. What's happening is... People have, especially collectors, have these saved searches. And when you list your item, they get an email that tells them, here's the new items that fit your criteria. I have like 20 of these coming into my email every morning. And if the right item pops along, bam, they're going to come over and buy it. So uh, do not do not worry about that. As long as you have a really good margin, um, take those margins and run Take those margins. Oh, I definitely think the six-month pay little thing here that eBay does is helping. Are you kidding me? That's, I mean, somebody who doesn't have $150 in the bank, but ah, I can do $25 for six months. Piece of cake. And and then they buy that high-priced stuff. I love that. You get the full payment right away. It's uh, it is uh, it's the PayPal um, um, credit, I guess they call it now. PayPal credit. And it comes with a price. Ask me how I know. (laughs) All right. One last one. And the only thing I want to say about this is I'm really upset. I didn't know you had this for sale. I totally would have bought this. I totally would have bought this and worn it right here on the show. But this comes from Gail. uh, Gail Rosenke. She says she had this that she paid a dollar for at a thrift store and sold for $24.99. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Yep. Uh, so if anybody finds another nice cow vest, think of me, okay? Have I mentioned my business is utterly good enterprises? Hello? Why do you think I got cows all over? All right. Thank you guys for turning in those hot sales. And be sure you come on over to the Danny App Facebook group where we post those every Sunday because there is oodles more. Oodles more you can be inspired and motivated by. You're going out to look for one right now. (laughs) All right. Let me know. I said it here in front of all you people that I would wear it on the show. And if you have missed a show. Or you just want to come back and listen to this one again because it's just so cool. Uh, You can go to iTunes where we love it if you will leave us a review. And, of course, YouTube. You can find it on the Vegas Video Network's YouTube where you can find all their other shows. Or you can just come on over to the Danny App YouTube channel, too, where I post all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, Roku, Stitcher, TuneIn, Chromecast, Apple TV, Google TV, Fire TV, uh, and of course, Vegas Video Network. Yeah, that's Scott's favorite. And uh, social media all over Facebook, Twitter, Overcast.fm, and just about anywhere else that you can search for cool stuff to watch because the Vegas Video Network rocks. Yeah, he's very happy about that. He's over there like hooting in his corner. Put the disco ball away, Scott. Put the disco ball away. All right. All right, with that, we'll be back next week. And I think we're going to talk about free shipping. I think we are. And I'm going to come find, I don't know who's going to be on here yet, but I'm going to find somebody who's against it. We're going to have a little debate. How about that? Let's make it fun. Be a little controversial. 